Smugglers lose 1.51 billion naira in eight months, and that's according to Nigeria Customs. We'll be taking a look at our first to topic this morning on the breakfast. What does that mean? Is that good news for the na nation's economy? And Minister of Aviation secures partnership with Canadian Aviation Electronics. We'll be taking a look at this as our second hot topic. We'll also be taking a look at the front pages of some national dailies this morning with our analysts joining us on Off the Press. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. I am Maureen menong -Wizigui. We'll go straight to our top trending. Our first top trending, the Governorship Election Petition Tribunal in Nasarawa State has nullified the election of Governor Abdullahi Suli of Nasarawa State declaring PDP's David Umbu Gadu as the winner, delivering the judgment virtually Chairman of the Tribunal, Justice Ezekiel Ajayi, declared Emmanuel Ombogado of the PDP as the lawfully elected governor of Nasarawa State. Justice Chiemelie Onaga, a member of the three panel, agreed with the judgment read by the panel chairman. The chairman declared that Ombogado provided the results of the various polling units and forms EC8A and proved to the tribunal that the results were manipulated in favor of the APC. He said that based on the proof from the various polling units before the tribunal, Ombogado had most of the valid votes at the election. He ordered INEC to withdraw the certificate of return issued to Sule and issue a new one to Ombogado. The only dissenting judgment was delivered by Justice Ibrahim Mashi, a third member who dismissed the petition filed by the PDP candidate for lacking in merit. He said the petitioner failed to prove his case and upheld INEC's declaration of Sule as winner. Reacting to the tribunal's decision, on Bogadu's counsel, Mr. Johnson Usman SAN, lauded it for a detailed judgment. The council said the tribunal had proved that the court is the last hope of the common man by affirming the decision of majority of the people of the state at the poll. And from there, we'll move to our second hot topic. The West African Examinations Council, WAIEC, has appointed a new head of the National Office uh, for Nigeria, Dr. Amos Dangot. He was, until now, the deputy registrar HNO's office and succeeded Mr. Patrick Aragon, whose tenure ended on October 1st. Dangot, 56, from Boko's local government area of Plateau State, has a bachelor's degree in animal production and a master of science in animal science from the University of Agriculture, Makro de Beno State, and the University of Ibadan in 1991 and 1994, respectively. He has a doctorate degree from Abubakar Tafawa Balewa University, Bochi, in 2017, and a Master of Education, Administration, and Planning in 2020 from the National Open University of Nigeria, Noun. Dangot joined the services of WAIEC as an assistant registrar, too, in 1998. He rose through the ranks to become a deputy registrar in April 2018. He served as an assistant registrar, subject officer, test development division, Wayek, Lagos, July 1998 to January 2005. And uh, he became senior assistant registrar, head of examination security, and deputy to the branch controller, Uyo branch office, January 2005 to January 2008. Senior Assistant Registrar, Head of Examination Security, and Deputy to the Branch Controller, Bochi Branch Office, between January 2008 to December 2011. Senior Assistant Registrar, Branch Controller, Yellow Branch Office, December 2011 to January 2019. So there you have the new head of WAIEC, uh, Dr. Amos Dangot. 
Okay, so those are the top trending this morning. We'll move from the first two to the third, which is the situation regarding mining in Plateau State. No fewer than 33 people have been killed in Plateau State as a result of collapsed mining sites in some communities within the past two months. The Secretary of the Plateau Indigenous Miners Association, Barkin Ladi, Pam Daniel, disclosed the grim number in just on Sunday during an event organized for artisanal miners and farmers which held in the council area. Daniel described the frequent collapse of mining sites in Barkin Ladi communities as worrisome, noting that the situation was posing a danger to the lives of the people, particularly the youth in the council area. All right, so he has appealed to the government to intervene in the situation while calling for more sensitization of the people to curb the ugly trend. Back in August, the mining site collapsed in a Hualgasa community, resulting in seven persons being pulled out dead, while three people were injured and taken to the hospital. However, there remained uncertainty about how many people were inside the mining site when it collapsed. And only after a register was opened in the community to track the number of missing persons was the number discovered to be total uh, 33. Those people are presumed to have been buried underneath the collapsed mining site. The secretary explained that when such things happen in rural communities, they are not reported. The community leader added that children no longer go to school in Barkin Ladi communities because of mining, which he says is crippling the growth and development of the society. Meanwhile, according to him, every year they hear of huge amounts of money being budgeted for mining, but the artisanal miners don't benefit from it. He called on the government to assist the community with the necessary equipment to minimize the dangers inherent in mining operations. The team lead for Plateau Youth Climate Change a Justice and Accountability Initiative, Daniel Mark and the project officer, Okwayami Osarimose said the essence of organizing the stakeholders' engagement was to assess the challenges being faced by the people in the mining community and to address them. Those are the three top trending we have for you this morning. And it's time for us to take a break. We'll be back with Of The Press. Stay with us. <music>